Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our little Easy Essentials cooking class. This is a really lovely basic um, class. It's really great for people who are sort of new to the Thermomix, but also for some of you who may have had Thermomix for a while mm -hmm. and uh, perhaps lost your Thermomix mojo, and we can't have that. We, we want it back. So I am Tess Murray. I'm a team leader here at Thermomix. <laughs> And I have got two of my beautiful consultants assisting tonight. We've got Erin Jones. Give us a wave, Erin. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And we've got Carolyn Sewell. Hi. <laughs> so they're going to be doing all the cooking tonight. And um, I'm just going to sit here and navigate uh, the screens and hit spotlight and so forth and answer your questions in the chat. Understand completely if you want to turn your mm. camera off, that is perfectly okay. Um, if you could also please mute during the session, that would be fantastic so we don't hear your background noise. And um, we'll be ready for a great class, hopefully. Now, um, this is Erin's first time, so be gentle with Erin. <laughs> She's a little bit nervous. I think, Carolyn, it's your second time, yeah? But it is. You're in great hands. I've also got a couple of consultants of mine just um, on tonight as well. I can see Lexi. Who else is on? Goodness. Yeah. Um, Beck is definitely on. I think she's been letting multiple times. Beck is on. Sarah might be on. Yes, she is. Sarah's on, yes. Awesome. Um, yeah, so we've got plenty of people who will jump into the chat. Yeah, g'day, Beck. Um, and help you out with any questions you've got and I'm more than happy to do that. If you have got a burning question that you just can't wait or you can't type it in, by all means, come off mute. We're pretty relaxed. We're pretty casual around here. Uh, we want you to be learning and we want to, you know, increase your your journey with Thermomix. And um, if you have fallen out of love with it, well, that's what us consultants are here to do is for to help you fall in love again. So we are going to smash through these recipes tonight. There are six recipes we are making. Um, and between the girls, we are going to um, interact and swing in, in and out of uh, different recipes. So strap in, hold on, and I hope you get some inspiration and, you know, you have the desire to go on and make some of these recipes yourselves. All right, so over to you, Kaz. You're starting us off. Am I? I thought it's got here that Lauren is starting us off. That's okay. I can um I can go first. Not all good. Maybe I'm um yeah, you're getting the sauteed onions on first. No, no problems at all. Okay, so hi everyone. Um as we said, my name is Carolyn. This was all set, ready to go, and it's just decided to shut itself down on me as mm. we did that. So we will get his law, absolutely. So I've got uh, sautéed onions for, um, I'm making the, um, we're going to be putting that on top of the bread. So I'm just going to, I've selected it here. I'm a little bit, a uh, little bit organised. I've already chopped up my onion, but we'll just get started. Yes, I do. Okay, so we want some olive oil. So we all know that it's great just to um, make sure that our scales are at zero and just put in 20 grams what I do find when you're pouring, it's always good just to slow a little bit as you get to that number. Otherwise, you will end up probably going over and then we'll have very oily, oily onions. But there we go. Now I'm just going to be precise. And we're going to go next. Now I have uh, not really weighed these, but we're going to just um, throw them in. I know they're going to be somewhere between the 200. 200 and 300, there you go. Okay. And next, placing the splash guard, which is the one thing that I have forgotten to get, Tess, so you're going to have to give me one sec. That's okay. <laughs> so I'm just wondering if you could jump on the chat and tell us what model Thermomix you have, whether it be one of our older ones, the TM21, 31, TM5, or this model, the TM6. Um, Carolyn is showing you our beautiful sparkling black that we have available at the moment. And Erin uh, will be using her beautiful classic white. And we have choice for a short time only. We'll go into more of that in a minute. Okay, so 
one thing I love about the splash guard is, or any of the safety features, it actually does get you to just confirm that you've done that step before you uh, keep going. So we've got the splash guard on now, and we are now going to just turn around for 10 minutes, just going to turn that around, and it's going to be sauteing. Over to you, Erin. Fantastic. Okay, what has happened? Um, I guess the other good thing with the onions, whilst you're sorting that out, the other good thing with uh, sautéing onions or anything like that is that, you know, we all love our slow-cooked casseroles and lots of things. And I quite often find that I'll just do sautéed onions in here just before I start doing something else. So you don't have to be following a guided recipe like I am tonight. You can absolutely uh, just sauté up a batch of onions. Sausage sandwiches for the kids or anything like that. You have to have onions with sausage sandwiches, in my opinion. So great oh, yeah. way to uh, great way to get your uh, to get your onions. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's got a really great sizzling sound. Obviously, high heat. So um, if you don't have the uh, the TM six, um, that is a function. Obviously, you won't quite have the same heat functions, but uh, we'll see that the difference in the onions at the end. Beautiful. Thanks, Carolyn. We'll come back to you a bit later. Over to you, Erin. Thank you, Tess and Kaz. So as Tess said, my name is Erin. Um, I'm also a consultant. I am tonight making three things back to back. So I'm doing whipped cream and then making butter and buttermilk. And then I'm using that buttermilk to make but the start buttermilk bread. So first of all, I'll be making um, whipped cream, but I'll be using the butter guided cooking recipe for it as it is the exact same ingredients. And the first step is the same. So the first step, inserting our butterfly whisk. She just slightly and just slightly turn until it latches into place, which doesn't, there it goes. And then pure cream, which I realised about half an hour before this started that I'd bought thickened cream instead of pure cream, but that is okay. It will still work the same. 600 grams. Now for the um, butter, obviously if I'm going to be going for a lot longer, you can hear the noise it's making. I'm going to take my measuring cup out. Of course, initially I'm making whipped cream. You will hear the sound actually change as it starts to sip it. And I want to be able to look through the actual top to be able to see, to make sure I'm not over whipping it. It's starting to thicken already. I can actually see that. I don't know if you know much about like the different stages of whipping cream. So you've got like the light whip, which is just going to start to come together, which I'm going to do now. I don't know if you can hear the sound is changing. So it's fine. It's actually struggling. Erin, we're struggling to hear you very clearly. So could you maybe uh -huh. step a bit closer to the. Can you hear me? Yeah. It was just a bit yep. muffled. Uh, might be because I'm using my ear So I'm just going to pause that there for a second. Of course, we have now. That's better. Well, I'm not. Because uh, I've stopped the machine as well. We now have our whipped cream. Woohoo! So that's the first part. I'm now going to put my lid back on. And I'm going to restart this. So I've only had four seconds left. So I'm going to add some more time on. And start it again. Now, because I've used thick and plain, it, it will take a little bit longer to separate than what it would if I was using pure cream. Can you hear me okay, Tess? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah not, not too bad. Awesome. So I'm trying to move away from it because I'm using my earbuds. It's a bit louder. Uh, so you, you kind of, I don't know if you can hear it, it's slowly separating it. Uh, so we've now gone past the whipped cream stage and we're slowly separating out the Hello. butter Hello. and the um, buttermilk. Yeah. It's all right, I've finished them. Okay. So I don't know if anyone has really, you've actually made butter in your film before. This is incredibly easy. A good way for making different flavoured butters for using, oh, we're almost there. So you can see it started to, it started to separate a little bit, but it's just not there enough. We're going to do it on for a little bit longer. It did say 
extend by two minutes if need be. And as I said, because I've used thick and cream, it will take a bit longer. So I'm going to go around to speed four. You, as I have the butterfly whisk in, you don't go above speed four. It's always up to maximum limit. The speed dust are actually written on your butterfly whisk as a re reminder for you. And the reason why you use steel cream over thick and cream like what I have, so like thick and cream contains thickness. Ah, uh, here you go. I can now hear it changed again. It's sounding like it is now separated from. So as I was saying, the thick and cream contains like different thickeners and gelatin, which also make it a bit harder. Yeah, you can now see it is now separated. So I'm just going to move this slightly. So we're going to remove a butterfly whisk. Trying to do without making a mess all over my bench and myself. <laughs> I'm not the cleanest of cooks, so it's quite common for me to have made a mess everywhere. I think your best cooks are messy cooks. Oh, yeah. And I, and I say that because I'm a messy cook. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're going to be using our steaming basket. I hold it on an angle just so I can get more holes down on the side. And now what I'm doing is pouring this. I'm sure if you can see. Uh, so what's coming out is actually a buttercream, which we're going to be using. And I don't have a lot of room. We're doing this there we go so you can see our butter and what's dripping down the bottom is our buttercream that we're going to be milk. using for our bread butter milk thank you that's all right i just don't want to confuse them all right trying to get as much of that out so you can see that's what almost over 200 mils i've gotten from that it's a lot of butter it's getting very thick okay so now we put it's back in here I just put it away. Oh, that's a really yeah. good question. Um, just hang on a tick, Erin. I don't know if you know the no answer to this, but I certainly don't. Um, Amy has asked, can you make buttercream and butter from lactose free cream too? Like yes, Simon? you can. There you go. Yes, you can. I have and literally been investigating be it this week. And would it need to be full fat lactose cream or could it be light? That I don't know. I believe you can use it with, um, so I was literally look, looking up this week and Zimmel, that's, that's the one that was recommended that if you can actually make it with Zimmel um, thick and cream. That was my, on my list because I have a lactose free house normally, as well as a gluten free house. Oh, that's awesome. So, Happy days, Amy. I bet you're glad you came on. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, go on. That is perfectly fine. I was actually going to mention that one. Um, so I've added the butter back in, and now we're adding in 500 grams of chilled water, which, as Tess pointed out to me earlier today, is just tap water because at the moment it is freezing. That's here in well, Melbourne. Well, it is in Melbourne. That, that is here in <laughs> Melbourne, I should say. Pop in the chat where you, you're tuning in from. Hopefully we've got some warmer climates there. We can dream of being there. Okay, mm. so then we're going to now wash it. So another five seconds, just back on speed four. And this is without the butterfly whisk. Oh, there you go. That's Gambia. It would be cold there. Yeah, Amy was just saying she's found that she has to use the full fat um, Zimmel cream to whip. Otherwise, it just doesn't really thicken very well. Each word, you know, Gambia, Melbourne. Okay, so now I've rinsed that. You can see it's pretty mushy inside the water. Oh, there we go, messy cook. I just spilt that all over myself. That's all right. You're not trying to save that one this time. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's the so part is, of your plan. It was. Yes. Yeah. It's 100%. We're going to believe that. <laughs> okay now what i didn't prepare myself for was thanks for the spare jug okay so now we have our butter and that's just the water that we use to rinse it if you want to preserve it so it lasts a bit longer in your fridge uh, you can then rinse it again with another um, 500 grams of chilled water 
And this, once it's been made, will it lasts up to two weeks in the fridge or up to three months in the freezer if it's sealed. You can either sit in a sealed container. I saw in the, in the mix shop have um, butter bowls that you can use um, that you can purchase, or what I do is I wrap them in cling wrap in a tube and freeze that so I can use it later or make it into what I've just recently done. Yes, there was her herb butter or different mm -hmm. flavoured butters. Okay, so now we're going to come out of this and we're going to start making our buttermilk bread. So I'm not going to clean the bowl. Oh, hang on. I'm going to get the last little bit of butter out of it also. I didn't see that go on there. So I'm not going to bother cleaning like my bowl to, because... Sorry, is it um, yeah. with your butter at that stage, um, once you've done the, the wash, if you add a teaspoon of salt, then it will be more like um, the salted butter if you wanted salt in there. That would also help it last a little bit longer, not much, because it's not a lot of salt. Um, yeah. So when when would you buy uh, cream on to make butter? Because, I mean, not if this isn't everybody's jam. Let's face it, not everybody wants to make butter. But when when would it be a good time? Well, the reason what made me investigate lactose-free butter from cream was because Zimmel lactose-free cream was $1.40 because it was going out of date the next day. And it would have been perfect because if it's closer to its expiry date, it separates quicker. Beautiful. So I was regretting not buying up because I didn't know if I could use it. So ah. that, that's the best time. When you see your cream on special, when you see it on discounted just before it expires, that's when you want to grab it. Yes. Yes. And that's the best time because it will separate quicker. And then you've got yourself butter for a fraction of the cost of what it would have cost you otherwise. That's it. And also, um, it's just, it's, um, it's a great it's a great time to buy it because you know you're really going to get bang for your buck then it's going to save you a lot of money mm. and what's some other things you can make with buttermilk buttermilk you see you're looking at scones you can obviously make them with bread um one really great one i discovered is you soak chicken in it and then when you um you then crumb it and it's, it makes it more sort of tender when you then i'm um, cooking like for chicken nuggets and things like that oh wow mm. There you go. I've learned something new. And yes, I saw that pancakes. Yes, pancakes. Pancakes. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, I'll let you get on with the bread. Okay. So I said the next one is our buttermilk bread. So we're using our buttermilk that we just made with our butter. So it's 180 grams of buttermilk. Oh, I have. I made 100. 89 grams out of that butter, out of that butter. It was perfect. <laughs> 200 grams of water. What is that? Over there? And two teaspoon of dried instant yeast. So I've put it. So I've already pre measured everything just to make it a bit easier for me. Just a little tip for you, too. Keeping your yeast in the freezer is a great way for it not to die. Mm -hmm. I also keep mine in the fridge because I use it a lot. But, yeah, I've heard the freezer one. I've got to try that one. Oh, it doesn't um, freeze in the freezer. It just stays the same. Oh, that's good to know. Hmm. Um, so I'm now heating that up to 37 degrees. So we're going to be activating the yeast. So you, you need to actually put in warm water to activate the yeast to help it actually um, grow and expand with your um, flour and your dough. Um, so I said I'm using dry, dry instant yeast. So it's needs a warm water to activate. Otherwise, you can use fresh yeast, which I personally have never used. I don't even know where I buy it, truthfully. Um, but I believe it's like crumbly, like ah, uh, yeah, so it's like crumbly, almost like feta type consistency. That um, um helps. It doesn't require. I believe it doesn't require activation, and it rises faster. I was doing my so research. Caitlin has just yeah. Caitlin has just asked what are the savings on butter versus standard cream. Caitlin, that really depends on how much you get your cream for, and that's what I was saying. Um, 
I tend to not make butter when cream is not on special, but when it's being thrown out for, um, you know, a third of the cost, then it makes the process of making butter so much better because you're going to be saving a lot of money. Um, it's reward for effort, I guess. So if you love making your own butter and knowing that there are no preservatives in it, go right ahead. It probably will be similar. Um, it's not really a cost saving, but if you buy it when it's on special, like we suggested, that's when you really get your bang for the buck. Yes, yeah, so I was just reading the comments. It's not coming through at the same time. <laughs> So it's really yes. important to heat your water because if you don't, um, your your bread's not going to rise properly. You won't activate your yeast and it just won't work. And particularly most of us are in Victoria from the comments. Um, it's bloody freezing here at the moment. So it is important to heat your water for two to three minutes. You'll find in summer it doesn't need all that time. Okay, so in summer you might only need to heat it for one minute. Just stop it. When it, as soon as it hits 37 degrees, you can stop it. Oh, which it has. So I will stop it. I see, yeah. I, um, Cassie, is it Casey asked the question, um, butter, once you've made it, as I say, and the fridge it can last up to about two weeks and in the freezer um, three months is what's recommended on the recipe. Yeah. So at the moment, Casey, when I make it, I make it in bulk because it, it's usually when, as I said, it's on special. If you go back through some of my posts about a week or two ago, I did make up a heap of quite a few batches of it. I freeze it, like Erin said. I put it into a bowl like a sausage and I put it in cling wrap and just make sure it's sealed really well, put it in the freezer, and then I just pull out um, one roll as I need it. And at the moment, I am keeping it on my bench because it's so blooming cold yes. anyway. <laughs> I say that's I the one I made yesterday. As well. So there we go. Yeah. That's what I've yeah, done. Same. Well. Awesome. Straight out of my freezer because I'm sitting And we would it. go through one of those rolls probably at least one a week in our house. Yeah, set up to, be able to make garlic bread. Yeah. Yeah. I still think it probably is a little bit cheaper and it's certainly got nothing in it because, I mean, I buy. If I don't buy that, I tend to buy the low pack because I do like butter rather than margarine and stuff. And I don't think for the quantity I got out of that, the one that I made this morning, I think it would be pretty much on par. And that was at full full price cream yeah. because it wasn't it wasn't on sale and it wasn't nearly out of date. Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, but I will continue because wait, we've got yes. our Yeast is all activated at 37 degrees. So the next part is I'm adding in it's 500 grams of baker's flour. So I'm actually just using all-purpose flour. So as I mentioned vaguely before, I have a gluten-free house. So baker's flour where I live, you can only really buy in five kilo bags and five kilos I'm not going to use because of a gluten-free house. Um, and one teaspoon of salt. So now we're going to be mix, uh, mixing all that together, the flour, the salt, and our yeast mixture. Around on the mixture. Now we're keeping the measuring cup in, and now we're using our dough function. So I don't know if many of you have used the dough function before. It's really great for you know, making the pizza doughs and bread. Uh, I'm making normal bread tonight. This is very... Um, weird. How did the ordinary form? I haven't made normal bread in quite a while. Just to answer the question that just came up. All right. So, Tess, are you going to no, no. Um, I might just give a bit, bit of a quick overview of cookie do, um, and just talk about how we create create a meal plan and do a shopping list really quickly while that's needing. So just let me know when it's finished, if you don't mind, please, Erin. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Oh, there's my. All right. So we start off with our exploring. Come on. My internet's going to play up now. All right, let's say we want to type in buttermilk bread. So we just type that into the search and we hit search. And there it is, buttermilk bread. 
All right, so we know we want to make that. We've got these three dots here. We click on that and we say, I want to cook it today. If we wanted to cook it another day, we would select that day. Okay, then we go into my week. And as you can see, here are all the recipes that we're making tonight. And these will be sent to you if you've registered for this class. Um, I'll have your email address and I will send you a recording of tonight. And I'll also send you the recipes um, for everything that we've made. So Kaz started with the sautéed onions, whipped cream, butter, um, and now we've moved on to the buttermilk bread. So let's just say we wanted to go to the shops to get all these ingredients. Again, these three dots, we click on them and we just go add to shopping list. Um, whipped cream the same, add to shopping list. And this is how you meal plan for a, a, you know, a week, two weeks. Some people like to do it two weeks in advance. Um, and that's how now we have created our shopping list. So it's got all of those um, recipes. So now we go show ingredients and you can either look via category or via recipe. So there are all the ingredients needed for each recipe, which is pretty useless to you when you're at the supermarket. If you search via category, it will put all the ingredients in bundles. So if you need cream in more than one recipe, which you do, it tells you the total amount of cream that you need. So this is where you would go through and take off things that you don't need to buy, i.e. you might have yeast already. You've probably got mixed seeds. We've got water in the tap. Definitely don't need to buy that. You might need baker's flour, um, butter. We'll leave the rest in there because I just want to show you. And there are the items that you have taken off so you can still access them. Um, and if you need to add additional items, that's where you do it. Okay, so you could then um, take your phone or any device that you have got the Cookie Do app on um, and you can do your shopping. And as you put things into your shopping trolley, you tick them off your list. You're only buying what you actually need and you have planned to use everything that you're buying. So you have less wastage, which is a great way to save money. Now, um, if you're extremely time poor, you might want to order your ingredients and you can do so at Woolies. So you select order ingredients and you'll be asked to choose your stall. Well, at the moment, you only have a choice between Woolworths and Woolworths. Um, and there we have created a Mac makeshift um, shopping cart. If you don't want to get the White Wings plain flour, you might instead want to go for the Woolies brand. You can swap it over and select that instead. Then when you're happy with your shopping list, you simply, um, yeah, righto, righto, righto. I don't want to find a product. Um, you then, oh, it's not going to let me. <laughs> it's all in paper. If only I could spell. Toilet paper. I'll just get whatever because I don't really, I'm not really shopping for this. Um, and then you, it even tells you the total. You select add to Woolworths cart and it integrates into the Woolworths shopping cart and you can organize click and collect um, where it can be delivered into your car or you can organize home delivery. How good is that? Who is using that function? I'm going to pop the link for Cookie Do in the chat box now. Um, and if you've got any questions, feel free to ask away. Back to you, Erin. I assume that's finished now. It is. It's good timing. So our dough is now all nicely kneaded. So we're going to put it down onto a silicon mat. Now, I don't know if you know this awesome hack. If you gently twist the bottom, so if you twist the little on the bottom, it will release your dough. It's being very stiff. There we go. Initially, it's very stiff, and you can see it's all starting to come out. Now, I still have some down on the blades. So, another little trick if you put it back on, and one, two seconds, speed 10, it'll throw all that off. Okay. 
Let me know what I put there. <clears throat> so, Aaron, when you finish yeah, presenting, yeah. can I just, just yeah. add? Um, we've got a rock chick seventy one has said that her house is gluten free. Also, you might like to pop the link to your um socials in the chat box when when um, Carolyn is presenting because um might be good I for them to follow that. you. Thank you. No problem. I was I was trying to do that, but it's hard to do it with my computer. Okay. So it's a bit sticky, so I need a bit more flour on here, unfortunately. Because I had it, I accidentally had a little bit too much water, so my dough is a bit more stickier. That's right, when I roll it into a ball, I'm gonna get some flour. Excuse me, sorry. And we're gonna roll it into a ball. I'll just quickly talk through so then we can go through to Kaz and I'll roll it into a ball while she's presenting. Um, roll into a ball. I'm going to roll it in my mat, and I'm actually going to prove it within my thermo mat. I don't know if you, um, any of you have one of these. These things are amazing, especially if you like me and do a lot of, um, like baking and sort of flower work. These are absolute game changer. Okay, Kaz, do you want to hand over to you while I roll this up? And get some more flour into it. Another tip there, Erin, oh, yeah. is um actually ah, I good. had somebody give me this tip is wet hands. When your dough is really sticky, if you just wet your hands, it helps you bring it together a bit easier. I did actually watch one the other day with a tip of putting oil on your hands to do it as well. Yeah, that too. Yeah. There you go. That's all it took. So now it's in a ball. I only needed that tiny little bit extra. Now I'm going to wrap it up just loosely. So this is also the thermo mat's also really good when you're making things like puff pastry and putting it in your fridge. I just wrap it in that instead of using cling wrap. Beautiful. And over to you, Kaz. Thank you. All right. So there is one that I did earlier. So I actually made this dough when I first got home from work, popped it into my silicon mat, into my thermo server, and stuck it in front of my fire because it was really cold in this house when I got home. So I wasn't going to. Uh, to do anything much on its own but I can feel that it uh, almost doesn't fit into the dish anymore so we'll just wangle it out and I'm actually going to um I'm just going to press this into uh, I've got a um, tray and I've just got the oven mat that actually goes into um, that can go straight into the oven so I'm actually going to just pop this one out. and this dough is quite sticky as well um, so I'm just going to sort of, I've wet my hands. I'm just going to do a little bit of, certainly a bit stickier than my pizza dough from the other day. But um, just get that sort of, we'll just work it through. Um, the, the oil or the flour tip probably works as well. Um, this is actually just moving off with the silicon, but if I didn't have a silicon mat, you can absolutely use the, um, use the flour that Erin suggested. I'm just going to sort of get this back into a ball so I can pop it into the tray. Um, I have to say that the house that smells great with the onions have been sautéed. Um, so I'll show you them in two secs. Just going to try and work this. So, so this definitely is a sticky dough, guys. Um, just be, I guess, be mindful of that when you are making it. I'm just going, it's really not... It's very messy, but it will be fine once we get it onto there. Um, so I know Tess has uh, she's had the, the finished product, um, and, yeah, it looks great. So I'm just going to work this through. You can do, I mean, this is, as I said, it is the bread mixture, but you can also, I mean, we're just going to make it into sort of like a flat bread. You could do it into scrolls. Um, I mean, how many people don't love like the, the scroll idea? Um, you could sprinkle it with some cinnamon if you wanted to do a, a sweeter version. Um, what I did do very quickly whilst uh, whilst Erin was doing her presenting was I actually just quickly grated up some cheese. I don't know about you, but I use my Thermomix all the time to pre-grate my cheeses. Um, I usually have in the freezer at any time I'll have Parmesan cheese pre-grated. I'll have tasty cheese pre-grated and I'll also have mozzarella. So I can just whip it out, um, freezes really well, and then also um, just comes straight out and you can start to use it straight away. Um, so that is, um, so this is going to be, this is going to be my dinner because I haven't had dinner yet. 
Um, so I'll be having a piece of this just to, to see what it comes out like. So I've spread that out. I'm now going to show you, and if only you could smell through uh, through here, got some beautifully sauteed onions. So they're nice and brown. You'll see with that high heat, you've got the uh, you've got the nice brown caramelization in there. Um, really interestingly, though, you would expect that it would catch in the in the bowl. There was nothing in the bowl. Just beautifully, um, just smells divine. So I'm going to. Uh, just do so i've spread that out it's not particularly pretty but you know a bit, bit rustic for uh for the purposes here i'm going to spread the onions on i will then just move them around myself with the spatula what i did do earlier because i as i said i wanted to add a little bit of flavor to this to this particular one is um, i pre-chopped a little bit of garlic and some herbs from my garden and I'm just going to then add them on top. So we'll just sprinkle that around. And whoops. So I have done plenty of cheese because uh, I needed to put some more into the freezer. So I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of cheese on top of that. Yum. Yum. And that is banger in the oven that is done ready to go in the oven all right just while you get organized and start your mayonnaise i'll quickly show my um end product what i prepared earlier so that is my loaf of buttermilk bread it is absolutely beautiful i've just put black black sesame seeds on top um and it is so easy now a little tip if you oops, if you don't know when your bread is cooked or not and you're a bit concerned hold it up and tap on the bottom should make that hollow sound then you know your bread's good to go so that's for lunch tomorrow um that uh erin showed you of rolling it up and letting the um, dough prove in the mat after it's doubled in size, about half an hour, um, you knock it down, basically just punch it a bit, <laughs> and then you literally um, chuck it in your tin, your bread tin. Now, we have these Mackey's bread tins um, available on the mix shop, and I'll include those in the email tomorrow um, with any other mix shop items that we have used today. And super easy. You don't even need to clean this. I will literally just wipe it out and ready for use next time. They are fantastic, those tins, and they just last forever. Now, we did have a quick question. Um, where's Kaz? Back on Spotlight. So we had a really good question in the chat, and that was, any tips on cleaning the browning on the bottom of the Thermomix bowl after the sauté? Best thing you can do is um, make sure you use a pre-clean function. Pop a bit of, um, put a litre of water in and a drop of detergent, dishwashing detergent. Um, sometimes I even put a little bit of baking soda in there as well. And then put that on the browning pre-clean setting. And um, that should remove most of it or make it loose enough that you can get in there with um, a scrubby. We sell those on the mix shop as well. The scrubbies are fantastic. It just it comes straight off. Um, and failing that, the dishwasher, the good old rinse aid in the dishwasher gets your bowl sparkling, back to sparkling clean again. I use vinegar to a drop of vinegar in mine um, when I'm doing browning and that works really well. All right. Who's made mayonnaise? And have you had success with mayonnaise? Yay. Good on you, Lexi. My daughter actually just made aioli yesterday it was divine oh, we had it in our sandwiches today beautiful garlic and lemon aioli really good anyway over to you Kaz. thank you so mayonnaise is one of the things that i like to i actually like to have mayonnaise in the fridge all the time that i've made again one of the reasons i got my thermomix was to actually uh to be able to do all my own sort of staples and stuff so a couple of weeks ago i had a big run of doing a, a load of stuff um, mayonnaise being one of them really quick and easy as well so if you do happen to start cooking something and realize you don't have mayonnaise which i'm sure has happened to all of us um you can quickly um you can quickly whip up a batch so 
what I'm going to do is show you how to cook and make. This is a cooked, uh, a cooked egg mayonnaise. Um, I don't know if anyone knows. Obviously, there's a big uh, concern if you've got pregnant women, people in the house, that um, you, you don't want to serve raw egg. Um, so with this mayonnaise, um, you can be you can be comfortable that the egg is actually cooked. There are some mayonnaises that you do can buy in the in the supermarket, and they do still contain a bit of raw egg. Um, so we at least we know in this one it's cooked. Uh, just to measure, I mean, I do this all the time. I'm always using my scales, uh, weighing with either a bowl or a jug on top, just uh, even if I'm not uh, using them. So I'm just going to weigh in my 300 grams of grapeseed oil. Um, probably was something I didn't buy a lot of grapeseed oil until I bought a Thermomix, and now it seems to be one of those things um, that I use quite a lot. Um, another one I do quite similarly to this all the time is uh, tartare sauce. So my husband uh, loves his fish, crumbed fish, um, uh, with some tartare sauce, and you know it's so easy just to quickly, uh, quickly whip that up whilst the fish is cooking. Um, with this mayonnaise tonight, I'm just going to uh, add a little bit of salt and pepper as a seasoning because we're actually making coleslaw. But you can do all sorts of things. You could make a curry mayonnaise with a curry powder. One I do quite often is seeded mustard or any mustard really. I and mean, you could use mustard powder as well. That works quite well. You can put some herbs and stuff in there. So you can actually add your flavours. Garlic, if you wanted to do a garlic mayonnaise, you just got me inspired, Tess, with the aioli. Maybe you could do a lemon and garlic mayonnaise. Um, so we will, I'm sort of doing that knowing what it's going to tell me to do. And we are just going to pop into the jug. I'm, I'm one of those cooks that, you know, that looks about a teaspoon to me um, and that will do. But, you know, obviously if you are doing something that needs a little bit of a finer uh, measurement, you could be a little bit more careful than what I was there. What? White vinegar, I'm using white wine vinegar um, and I'm going to put that in. So that's 30 grams. Again, just pouring a little bit slowly over the top so that I can see as we get to closer. I'll just slow it off and stop it. Okay, we go next. Okay, so now we're going to have my simmery basket is here. So now I'm just going to pop the lid back on and I'm going to put the simmery basket on. And I'm just going to cook that for three minutes. Um, so that's one of the things, as I said, you can obviously use, um, you can use any of the, the flavours too. Um, does someone want to pop in the chat what's your, uh, any ideas, other flavouring ideas for mayonnaise that people have? Um, but the, is there a difference in using the simmering basket on top as opposed to the splash guard? Yes, there is. So the splash guard is purely designed um, as it sounds, I'm just trying to find mine so I can actually do this so I can show you. So this is absolutely designed so that you don't, you'll see if I put it a bit closer, you've got the, the cover there. So you're not going to uh, look into it and run the risk of getting with the high heat, you get the splash coming out, but it does allow the ventilation. With the steam basket, it is actually giving you a lot more of a steam function, but you can also put things on top as well at the same time. I'm quite often in um, quite often use my steaming basket to put things in, but they've got a lot more air, circulate a lot more air. Um, and you can also, as I said, you can use them for a number of cooking functions. Um, did I leave anything out other for the reasons of the steaming basket, Tess? Um, look, it's just, it is a safety feature. And tr traditionally you would use the simmering basket for more um, uh, like reduction dishes, like your risotto and so forth. So, yes. um, you know, it's like anything with Thermomix recipes. If you if you follow the instructions, you're more likely to get success, aside from it being also a safety feature. Yeah. Um, so I did notice there we had um, dill in the, um, the mayonnaise. That would be really nice. I love dill. I love dill in anything. Um, one that I just popped into my head was wasabi. You could do like a bit of wasabi just to give it, I mean, give it a bit of a kick. Um, the citrus oh, is the lime and the lemon. 
for pre counts yeah so i think look you know that's one of the great things is we can add flavors and intensify the um the flavoring in our food but we're we still know what's going in it so um i do tend to sort of to like to do that i mean you could simply just put um you could do a garlic mayonnaise and just have the have the garlic um and i would quite often would do um would do the garlic first and then just chop it chop it really finely um, you don't need to worry about crushing and chopping anymore. We just use use the thermomix. So put 30 seconds to go. And uh, All right, just while you're doing that, Carolyn, and getting ready for your next step, um, I just want to sort of remind you all, I'll spotlight so you can see. There we go. Remind you all about um, host rewards and reaching out to your consultant, whoever that may be, um, and having a cooking experience whether it be in your home or online we're more than happy to do this online and not have to jump in our car either or whatever suits you because it is all about you at the end of the day we absolutely love inspiring and re-inspiring our customers who've had their thermies for a while at any point in time um casey's on here tonight casey's had her thermomics for a little while she did a demo with me last week and um she had no clue about cookie do and ordering by woolies but she's on to it now and she's loving it um and you know she's able to pick up a host reward for introducing me to some new people which is fantastic sharing the thermi love so remember our host rewards we've got things like the beautiful thermo servers um the mats that uh you saw erin using with the bread dough tonight um we have also this month got um a 12 month cookie do subscription which is uh, uh, sorry, a host reward if somebody at your demonstration purchases a Thermomix within 14 days of your demonstration, you can get Cookie Do for free. I don't know about you, but I love freebies. How are you going there, Kaz? I'm good. Vinegar was a little strong. <laughs> I can't. So, so I've just, uh, just done my eggs into a small bowl and now I'm going to turn the speed selector to three, meanwhile doing the next step. So you quite often find with things like your mayonnaises and your sauces, it will actually give you that instruction to do the next step as you go. So we will, um, next step is adding the reserved eggs through the hole. So I'm going to pop them in through the hole. Neil has to just just suggested getting flash and trying some truffle in your mayonnaise. Hello. Ooh, wow. Now you're talking. Absolutely. So we've just done that. Great idea. I am one of these people that tends to take my lid on and off all the time, but just you can always leave it on there and just then when you're actually preparing your food, just prepare it so that it fits through the hole. Um, okay. So now we're going to pop our measuring cup back in. Then I love how easy it is. If you can read, you can follow the instructions. So pop the cup back in. And we're going to turn the selector. And you guessed it, we're going to follow the next step at the same time. So whoops, I'm just going to turn that to six. And what I'm going to be doing is just gradually pouring. through the top so that it just emulsifies. We're pouring it really slowly so that you can see it's actually going into the mayonnaise, into the jug, sorry, into making mayonnaise, just through the small hole that we use underneath the seat. So we'll just... A little tip that I learned too, Kaz, um, from one of our other consultants is uh, Catherine Day, is if you actually pour the oil into the lid of the mixing bowl you don't have to pour it in that slowly you can actually pour it all in it will seep through the measuring cup at the right speed for the emulsification process that sounds perfect I always say to my customers too listen to your thermomix it talks to you it tells you when it's happy and I know that that sound I just heard then, it was um, definitely the sound of it emulsifying beautifully. And it's funny too, I forgot to mention when Erin was making the butter, you almost hear this 
thwack, thwack sound against the jug. And that's when I know that the, the butter and the buttermilk are separated. So even when you're grating cheese, grating Parmesan cheese, it says 10 seconds, but really it's done by about six if you listen to the sound of your machine. I had no idea what your great tip was, Tess, because I was uh, standing over my pan. <laughs> I'll tell you I'll later, tip. okay? I was going to say, I'll get that tip later. So I have now have delicious egg, cooked egg mayonnaise. So I'm just going to scrape that down, throw it into the bowl. I'm not going to wash my bowl because I'm making mayonnaise. So what's the point in washing the bowl when I'm actually oh, so. washing mayonnaise? Okay. You're making coleslaw. I'm making coleslaw. It's been yes. a long it's day, been, hasn't it, Kaz? It's been, it's been a very long day. Yes. <laughs> I was uh, yeah, started it uh, early making my butter and just get my buttermilk, so it has, and full day at work and uh, been doing it, but lots of fun. Uh, so I am making col uh, mayonnaise. No, I'm not making coleslaw. What I do find quite often is it will tell me to wash the bowl. I'll always think about that before I do it because, you know, if I'm actually cooking what is already in there, there's actually no need. So I've given that, put the majority of it out because obviously I'm not going to have all of this mayonnaise in the cold pot, but we've got plenty there. Now, this cold slaw, again, is, you know, cold slaw is just one of those classic Salads. I don't think that we, um, you know, every barbecue you go to, you'll always end up with a cold store um, in there. So we're just going to, uh, again, hit start cooking. Now I have, um, I'll test my, my, my weighing skills here. So I just set it to three. I've got my carrots. I'm just going to throw my carrots, just chopped. Doesn't have to be too um, too small. Um, I've got them in there. There you go, 92, close enough to 100 for my liking. Um, net, one good thing, you don't have to be too worried about your measurements. You can be a little under, a little over, and you'll be just fine. One green apple, so that was easy. I've just quartered it, caught it and quartered it, throw that in. Um, 50 grams of red onion. I love red onion, so I wouldn't be too fast if it was a little bit over, but for people that don't like onion, you could easily leave it out. Um, but if you do like onion, you can always add a little bit extra. So I'm going to go there. 54, that's close enough. Next, and then 200. Now I've got, um, I had red cabbage or purple cabbage in the, in the fridge which I needed to use up. So I thought I would use that for my cold food. But again, you could use the normal green cabbage. Um, you could use it half and half if you wanted to. Quite often um, that's quite pretty as well. So just popping that in in my pieces. We are almost there, just over. How's that? I was almost out of my bowl. Um, next, want a little bit of salt to taste, just a pinch. And pepper. Now, I tend to always put more pepper and less salt in my cooking, but that is obviously, again, personal preference to what you what you prefer to do. And next, so two tablespoons of mayonnaise. I'm just going to um, quickly lay that in. I'm not going to be too exact. I'm just going to put two big uh, big dollops. I know I've already got mayonnaise in there, so I just add a little bit more, and you can always add more down the track if you want to. Next, so I'm going to put my take my measuring cup out, of my lid, my lid on. And then what it's asking me to do, which you will again get this in quite a lot of recipes, is to actually put your spatula that comes with your TM6, put that through the hole and just give it all a bit of a stir as you're going. So I've had people say to me, but you're going to chop the blade. You won't chop the blade. It does stop, so it won't get anywhere near the blades. Um, but it, there's a little video there if you're, if you're not 100% sure to do that before you give it a go for the first time. So this is only for a couple of seconds. I'm just going to just chopping it. Next. Okay, so we'll take down. Take it down. Now, 
I'm going to definitely um, need to chop that up a little bit more. But again, if you like, like your sort of coleslaw a little bit crunchier and a little bit bigger pieces, then you would obviously chop it down for less time. But um, now we're going to put the measuring cup in because I've freed it a lot. Next, another two seconds. Yeah, it says to prolong it. I, I can tell that it's probably not how I like my coleslaw. I do like it a little bit finer, so I'm just going to do it for another three seconds. Turn it out there. And done. Okay, so until you get, so it still is probably still a little bit chunkier than um, particularly the carrot. So the carrot probably could have been a cut up a little bit smaller, but, you know, it's it's actually pretty good. I'm going to give it another couple of goes just to, to get it a little bit smaller. Um, but that's your coleslaw um, all done with the mayonnaise. How quick was that? And you've got a salad on the table. Um, as I said, you could definitely get a little bit finer if you chopped things up a little bit uh, little bit more personal preference a lot of people like sort of the, the thicker more crunchy um i quite like my pulse a little bit thinner so i'm just going to give that another couple of goes um afterwards and then that will be done and you said for lunch tomorrow lovely i've got my lunch for tomorrow awesome well i've just popped a few things in the chat in case you haven't um seen it first of all um my daughter's pony club is having a raffle and if you would like to win a thermomix for 20 bucks please jump on and um hit the link and we would be very grateful for your support Secondly, we are look, doing another class in a couple of weeks' time, and it's going to be around midweek um, nightmares, basically, no, midweek dishes that we can get on the table in less than 30 minutes. So um, as busy parents, we're all, all about um, trying to get nutritious meals that are tasty and have variety in them, and that's uh, where Cookie Do helps us out. And um, so, yeah. I've also got the details of that class, but it will be in your email as well. All right, Kaz, show us your dinner. There we go. So um, smells great, and um, I'm looking forward to having a piece of it. But yeah, so there starving. we go. Oh, I'm all right, but yes, I am a little bit peckish. But just going to show how versatile the dough can be. So you've seen the bread. Um, this is more of a, like a flatbread sort of focaccia type style. Um, you could easily turn it into a sweet, um, and yeah, and and by the way, the buttermilk scones are amazing in mm, your family. They are so. really good. Yeah. Has one thing we didn't. How long did you cook that one for? Because it's not in the main recipe. How long did you cook it to be flat? Oh uh, well, yeah, that's a, that was very awesome. Mm, better remember that I've got that in there while I'm making pasta. I reckon it's probably been in there about 15, 20 minutes. Erin, no, you can just see it's just starting to brown on the bottom. You could probably go back in for another few minutes just to be really confident, but yeah, 15, 20 minutes or until, um, and I just had it on a uh, fan forced at 200. Beautiful. It's similar to your pizza, Bianca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very similar. Probably I'd probably do my pizza a little bit hotter, but um, yeah. Beautiful. Hey, everyone, I just want to um, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you very much to Erin. You've done a fantastic job for your first ever time yeah. um, well doing done, a Aaron. live cooking class. Well done, Erin. And um, thank you also, Carolyn, for your expertise and, you know, working full time and still managing to do this um, as a bit of a side hustle is always wonderful as well. If any of you are potentially interested in joining our team and becoming a consultant, please stay on and I'll give you the details of our next business information session um, and yeah, we'd love to we'd love to chat to you. Just find out all there is to know, and you can make an informed decision from there. There's no pressure, no obligation. Um, we'd love to have you on our team. Yeah. So thank you all very much. And good thanks, night. Thanks, everyone.